Brian and I and Scott have seen it, and here's what Chronicle is. Okay, it's it's as one of them films that three high schoolers stumble upon some like glowy shit in a cave after a party, and end up gaining superpowers. And it's one of these found footage type films where uh, obviously they're piecing everything together. There's a student who one of the kids basically has a shitty life, and he starts filming everything, and you know eventually they learn to develop these powers. Uh, at first, they start using them for like what, immature stuff, like moving the lady's car around when she's shopping and, and things like that. Blowing skirts up. That's Blowing skirts up. Th- things that normal teenagers would do. Fuck, I'd do that. Dude, I'd do that now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but then what happens essentially is things get ugly as one, one member, I'm not saying who, because no, spoiler alert, gets a little more powerful and, and angry, right? Just like you would expect in any superhero story. Um it, it is a found footage film, but they do do some very clever things in terms of making it so that they can establish actual film shots. Like they add some because they're developing their powers and they're getting more more mental uh, capabilities. They're actually learning the the main kid that that actually is filming everything. He learns how to hold the camera with his mind, which sounds cheesy, but it actually works in the scope of the film. And so basically, he can have the camera film them. While they're doing a lot of this cool shit, um, my personal review: good, solid acting from uh, Dane DeHaan, who played Andrew. Alex Russell plays Matt, and Michael Jordan, not that Michael Jordan, plays Steve. Uh, I wish it was that Michael Jordan; that would be pretty good cast. Josh yes. Trank is the director, and I think he actually has some skills. He's pretty, he's pretty sweet. He takes a lot of creative twists with with the found footage genre. Really makes it click. Scott, what did you think? I thought it was a it was a lot of fun. I just um, I don't want to say I was disappointed. I just think I was a little overhyped going into it, and I wanted to like it a lot more than I did. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think we had some discussion last week about after you saw it before I saw it, and I kind of agree with you in that. I think I might have liked it better as a traditional film instead of a fun footage film. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Um, I I kept being bugged by the fact by that fact. I kept being distracted by the fact that there was that. We were, this kid was holding the camera. He was floating the camera around, that kind of thing. Um, there were some clever stuff that they did with like security footage and that kind of thing that, that took you out of it a little bit. And that was where I felt like I was more interested in it because I was watching it from an actual recording instead of, Oh, this kid's got a camcorder. Like it just mm-hmm. seemed too convenient that the camcorder was on all the time for, for everything. It's always convenient in these movies, man. But this one, it was really, it was <laughs> even worse. I mean, I mean the paranormal activity ones. There was that sense of, oh, I want to record this because I, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Oh. This was more like the kid just wanted it on because oh, I just have a camera. I just want to film it. I just want. He's I, lonely and he had feelings yeah. and he's hurt. There was a couple. Yeah, so, of, so that's you know that that makes total sense. Where <laughs> you know my life is miserable and totally sucks. So what I want to do is I want to record it so I can watch it later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it makes a really but, good point. But anyway, I'm sorry. Go no, 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 you're I fine. There, there, um, there was too many shots of of him sitting in bed filming himself. Not that sounds wrong, <laughs> but like like Aaron said, he figures out how he can flip the camera and kind of manipulate it, or whatever. And there's just there's just way too many shots of him just having the camera floating above his head and filming himself staring at the camera. You know, he's upset a lot. We get it. <laughs> you know, I mean. They're trying to get a point, and I just think it was driven home a little bit too much. So, um, that said, the, the special effects looked really good. Mm-hmm. There's like there were a couple of glaring issues, but overall, I thought this, it looked really cool. Um, and I did like I actually liked how the film ended. I, I thought did you? Yeah, I didn't, didn't think I was going to kind of the direction they were going, but it got a little bit too crazy, I think. But um, I, I enjoyed how they wrapped it up. So, Brian, what did you think? I kind of actually I I agree, and then and, and totally disagree with Scott there. I agree <laughs> that it's it was it was a movie that when there was very little buzz that I really wanted to see it, but then after as we got closer, the the hype to quality of the movie ratio kind of tilted the other way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought there was a probably it didn't deliver enough for the hype that was out there. Mm-hmm. Um. But I actually like the I actually like the use of the camera. I thought it was uh, I think I texted this to you, Aaron. Mm-hmm. I was like shaky cam done right, mm-hmm. and and you know I've 
been <laughs> I've been very vocal about the fact of the only reason I didn't like Cloverfield was the nauseous feeling you get with a bouncy camera for an hour and a half or hour, 45 minutes, but they did this right. You know, the guy, they, they set it up, they set up the rules in the movie perfectly. They say, you know, he's, you know, they're, they're getting stronger with their powers. It's like a muscle. You, the more you work it, the stronger you get, you know, and he controls that camera. And then, so after, after a little while, I didn't think about it. I just figured, well, he's, he's floating that camera. So I could focus on whatever it is, you know, the scene was about. So that part didn't bother me. Mm-hmm. I do so. agree with you about the shaky cam. I thought it was it was done better. But what's interesting is the guy that I went and saw it with, all he complained mm-hmm. about after it was done was, man, I'm, I'm getting dizzy. I, I can't stand the, the shaky camera and all this and stuff. And Seriously? I, yeah. That's I was stupid. Based I told, on, I told him you should go if see. Have you seen any other found footage movies? Yeah. That's yeah. wrong. I said, go see Cloverfield <laughs> and tell me that. Yeah, go see Cloverfield and he'll, he'll have an epileptic seizure. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Brian. So it's uh, – I you know I, I would probably give it about a seven and a half. Mm-hmm. I thought the uh, out of ten, I thought overall it was a really good movie, uh, but it was just one of those. I, I think you see a lot of, I think you see a lot in the previews. That's, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is the the stuff that you want the the stuff you see in the previews that makes you want to go see it. There's not a whole lot more to it. Yeah, gotcha. So you give it how much out of ten? I'd, I'd give it seven. Seven, Scott? I was going to say seven as well. Um, I Just to finish mine up real quick, I thought the effects were, were top-notch, most of them. But when the kids learn to fly, or actually, when the kids first learn how to fly because they're using their mind to control it, um, that part was fantastic. I thought, because I actually felt like as giddy as they did. You know, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. They're, they're flying. And they learn how to control the camera. And the way that... I, I'm with Brian. I completely think they did well with that camera idea. There are some really bad special effects, though. The, did you see the shot I was talking yeah. about? <laughs> There's one where, where this kid, he's in he's in another, the other kid's room, and they're having a, a tiff or whatever, and then he flies out of the room, and it's exactly like Scott Pilgrim <laughs> when when uh, when Knives Chow shows up at the door. Is Scott, Scott here? here? And then he pew, flies out the window. It's exactly like that. It's so bad. It's very... <laughs> It, it's one of those where it's so bad it drawed me out of the movie because I started giggling. Um, and it <laughs> wasn't you out. It drew me out. Oh. Sorry. Fuck hey, you say hey. my wife and I. I yeah, just... that's what I'm saying. Good call. Good catch. <laughs> You're getting smarter. <laughs> um, but the one thing I didn't agree with, I think the end goes a little over the top. I mm-hmm. wish they would have brought it down a hair. I thought the acting got – that's where the acting got a little – yeah, okay. The and, one line in particular that he screams out, I was like – there, really? there's several where I was grimacing and going, really? Now you guys are going, you know, eh, bring it down a hair. But I didn't think it was enough to make it bad or anything. It just wasn't as awesome as everybody likes to say, or the the hype has been. So overall, I'd say seven and a half out of ten. So. Okay, movie guys, did oh. you catch the T-shirt that the guy was wearing towards the end of the movie? Which uh, T-shirt? Which guy? The one that was at the party that went after. To chase after the other guy. No. Nope. What was it? No, just it was a it was a I guess a nod towards Alien. It oh. was a the, the Nostromo. Oh, you, the, their the, their patch for their the ship they were on. So hmm. it was just a on his t shirt. Gotcha. Didn't know if anybody else got that. Nope. Didn't catch it. So I gave it seven and a half out of ten. Scott gives seven. Brian gives seven. So it's worth checking out. Mm-hmm. You know, it is. It's definitely. It's a good movie. It's not a great movie. It's I a think good movie. Would, I think it would have liked it better if I would have been surprised by it. Like as like as surprised as it was when I first saw the trailer. Like the first trailer we saw back when we started recording the mm-hmm. show, I was like, awesome. I wish it would have gone in. Ha, right. You Had I, I mean? not known anything about this movie yeah. and I picked it up, let's say at Blockbuster or Netflix, yeah. whatever, mm-hmm. and I brought it home or, or pulled it up on you know on the queue, I would have been blown away by this movie. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Here. So stay away from the uh, hype machine. You'll probably like it a lot more. 